Dave's Martin the Guitar Guy here. I'm just going to be showing you guys some classic songs. And so having a little look through my set list, this is one of the classic songs that everyone just loves to hear and sing along when I'm doing set list or if we're playing at a party, anything like that. It's a song called Dock of the Bay by Otis Redding. So I'm going to show you how I play this song. And it's just little nuances that happen during the song as well. So I'll play a little bit. Sitting in the morning sun I'll be sitting when the evening comes Watching the ships roll in And I'm watching roll away again Yeah, I'm sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Sitting on the dock of the bay Wasting time Etc. So you get the idea of what's happening there anyway. Um, there's more to the song, but there's some cool things that I'm doing uh, that might be fun for you to learn in behind what's happening, okay? So we're going to start with the left hand and what's happening there, and then we'll break down what's happening with the right hand, and it'll all make sense in the end. So the intro, I'm basing it on a G chord, so I'm doing my classic G shape here. I'm basing it on there, but then I'm doing this on the intro. You see my first thing is not doing much. I'm lifting that and I'm muting the string below that. As I get lazier with guitar, which I've definitely done, I've found ways of getting chords and making them sound cool without actually using many fingers. Just gotten really lazy to be honest. Technically that's the exact G I should be doing, but I like to just change things up a little bit and that keeps my finger free to do this next little bit, which is that. This little, this little riff here, which is first finger. Do I always use the first finger? Actually, I use the second finger. What I'm talking about? Second finger is going to come down to the third fret on the fifth string, and I'm going to play that note, a downstroke, and I slide from three to five, and it's quite a quick slide, really quick. So it's almost it's so quick it's almost unrecognisable. Okay, it's a real quick slide. And then I play an upstroke of the string, which is the same note of the string below that, which is a D note, which is the zero, okay? Okay. Okay, so that's what's happening in the intro. Now, let's break it down for the other hand, okay? So for the right hand, I'm doing mostly downstrokes for this groove. Okay, and the groove is what it's all about. You know my stuff, then you'll know I, I'm always on about the right hand because that's where the feeling comes from. The left hand plays us the notes and gives us the noises we want. The right hand makes it give it that emotion and the feel we want. So the right hand, we're going to be doing down strokes. Or it's like a down, up, down, up thing. Okay, to start with, I'm doing just, that's probably a good way to start just to get that grounded. Just using that G chord I had in the left hand, we're going to be going a downstroke on the top string of the, of the G chord, and I'm muting. I'm coming down and muting that. Go and check out my videos on muting if you don't know what that's about. And we're going to do an upstroke on the bottom strings, just maybe either two or three strings as an upstroke. And that's not muted, that's just an upstroke, so there is no muting. It's very hard to mute an upstroke and make it sound cool anyway, so just, and then I'm slapping the guitar afterwards, and I'm doing an up, another upstroke. So the downstrokes are all muted, so what I'm doing there, I'm, all the downstrokes are muted, I'm getting a good G note on the bass note, I'm getting an upstroke of, a, of the chords, then the next one, I'm just sort of hitting the strings but not really getting much out of it, I'm just getting more of a mute and then another upstroke which gives us that slap, uh, that gives you that snare drum feel. Okay, and then once you've got that down, program that over and over and over, once you've got that really solid we add in the, which is simply, you've seen the left hand, the right hand just goes down, up, down, up and I'm picking the fifth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string. And then that rhythm, yeah, um, so I'm just going, okay. And then quickly getting back to the G again, so. It's 
something like that. I do different variations on a different day and it might feel slightly different, but it's based around that. So that's that part. From then on, we're just doing the chords. So let's go through, look at the left hand now and look at all the chords that we're doing. So we're going from a G chord to a B7 to a C. Now I can do, I'll do a different C every single time I do this, by the way, but basically a C, then to an A7. Okay. So let's go through it again. So we've got G, basic normal G, then a B7, which if you're tabbing a B7 out, you've not seen that before. It's from the fifth string. Two, one, two, zero, two. Then to a C chord, just a basic three finger C I'm doing at this stage, and then down to an A7. But what I'll do is sometimes I'll add a bass riff in there. So I'll go. Like I did there. Let's show you how to do that. So we're going to go from a G chord. Then we're going to go, oh, uh, sorry, from the first part of that riff, we're going from the third fret on the top string, which is that G we've got anyway. G, or the three on the top string. Then, oh, one, two. So, do, 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 do. So it's three, oh, one, two. And that two is the beginning of the B7. Quite a bluesy um, way to get to the B7, as opposed to just going G. Which is still cool, but it's just. Okay, and I'm keeping, and the right hand, we'll come back to that in a second, but the right hand's keeping that groove going. So that's how I do that, going to the, to the B7. Then we've got a C chord. Then I lead my way back down to an A7. So it's C, B, B flat, A, but the notes, if you're tabbing it out from the fifth string, three, two, one, zero, and then we do the A7 chord. C, da, 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 da. So it's the same idea as the G. There's four notes leading their way up to a B7. C, and then lead your way. Bun, da, da, da. Now, let's have a look at the right hand, because that all looks, that's pretty simple, the C and the A7, and the G and the B7. Let's have a look at the right hand, what's happening there. Now, wanna, for those people out there that follow my channel or follow my stuff on jamarama.com, you will know about TikToking really well, hopefully, and have a great foundation in that. But you, this TikTok thing I talk about, which is basically the hand constantly moving, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If you look closely, I'm gonna play again. Watch my hand for this down, up stroke thing that's happening. Constantly moving, even if I'm not playing anything. Even to the stage where I don't play any chord, I'm just going, I mean, I'm just doing that in amongst the chords. Hear that? That, that chicka chicka. Now the natural tendency to do in anything I'm teaching for any student sitting there, and I guarantee you're doing this, you're trying to look at my left hand to see what cool things I'm doing with the left hand down on the frets. But it's all happening in the right hand. I mean most of it is happening in the right hand. This is where it's really important. G, do that little doom, chick it, chick it. Then I'm just going through the riff, doom, just to individual notes. Then back to the, the groove. Then C, to the A7. And just keep getting really good at that groove. Another thing that's happening with that now, I'll have to show you the left hand for a little bit of this with the chords. Is with the left hand in that back beat that. Um, you might notice I'm releasing the chord, the pressure of it, still in, it's still intact, but I'm releasing it to give all the strings, to mute the strings basically. It doesn't guarantee a perfect mute. You, you might get that sort of thing happening or, or a variation of that, or a, a noisy variation. But um, I'm muting, the, I'm letting my fingers come off so I can strum a, a strong downbeat and get that snare sound, which is the cut, like a... doing a B7, I'm getting a strong chord off, strong off, 
that's really popular with a lot of songs, just to do that. So the first half, on, on, off, on, off. Even to the point where I flatten my fingers relaxed over the strings to mute the strings so I get the backbeat. So. So the first half of the bar is on and then the rest is off. Real simple idea, but it's amazing what that'll do to your playing. So we got through the G, B7, to the C, C then working our way down to an A7. And that's pretty much what we do for most, well, for all of the verses. There's little things we can add to that as uh, nuances as well. Next part of that is the chorus. Now I do a G, but I release my first finger and my little finger from the G. So I have this kind of a drone G. So the way that's played would be three, mute on the next string, zero, zero, three. And then pretty much a mute at the bottom as well. So there's two strings that are muted, the fifth string and the first string. And I use my first finger and my little finger to do a little riff inside the chords. What I'm doing there, so I'm doing a G chord, putting my first finger down on the second fret of the third string, I'm hammering on with my little finger, quite advanced, I'm strumming the whole chord, or aiming at least for that area, and doing a little hammer on there with two down strokes. Let's have a look at that. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the hammer on from this first, I'm just looking at my first finger, my little fourth finger here. That's right. Hammering on from the second fret to the fourth fret. So if I just look at that string, which is, I'll give you the tab, two, four, hammer on, two, four, hammer on, uh, then two, zero, and then we do the second chord, which is the E7 chord. I'll do that again. So G, and into an E7 chord at the end. So it's a G chord, strum, and then the riff. And it doesn't matter how rough that sounds when you first do that, it doesn't matter what strings, you can strum the whole lot. It still sounds cool. Or you can focus right in. Right in, like right in on those two strings. Two different ways of doing that. So that's it. on the dark of the B. E7, you could repeat that, or some variation of that, then the last part we go to an A7, G, to E7, so the chords for that are G to, to that E7, G, E7 again, slightly different in this one, G to A7, sitting on the dark of the bay, then G, E7 again. So if you're adding in all the techniques we've been doing, that should be really simple for you to do, but that's just showing the little nuances that go on in that song. Uh, and so that's quite a big lesson, but um, it's a classic song. The groove is the most important thing for this song, keeping it laid back or, or keeping it uh, funky with that right hand. That, that sort of thing is going to make people's heads bob all the way. You can't help it. Everyone's going to be doing this. Straight away the cameraman was doing that. He's, John's given it this straight away when he hears that. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing when you look at those heads bobbing and those feet tapping. Um, if you really like this lesson, there's going to be more of these classic lessons on classic songs. I'm going to be doing heaps more of these things in future instead of just being like one video every six months. We're going to be doing it every week. We're going to be making it a regular thing so you can have uh, some wicked songs in your repertoire. If you really like my style of teaching and you'd like to learn more, please subscribe and do go check out jamrama.com where you can get a complete foundation in, in guitar. If, uh, I believe everyone should have a good foundation in guitar instead of just having little tiny bits here and there from different YouTube channels or whatever. It really does affect your confidence. So if you want to be a confident guitarist, go to jamrama.com. Also subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you guys very shortly.